Hello, good day. I am Ahmed Rajam, a BS Hospitality Management student at the Western Mindanao State University. I am Angel George M. Demofito, your first reporter for the day. Here in this context of 19th century, um, we will single out some major economic, political, cultural, and religious developments of the 19th century that influenced Rizal's growth as a nationalist and condition the evolution of his thought. Without an understanding that can scarcely understand Rizal's enduring importance of the Filipino people, nor the relevance of his ideas and ideals today, um, one of the ironies of the cult rendered to Rizal as a national hero is that often his words rather than his thoughts and have been invoked without any consideration of the historical context in which they were spoken or of the issue as addressed. The Filipinos in this time were unfortunate victims of the evils of unjust, biased, and deteriorating power. The instability of Spanish politics since the turbulent reign of King Ferdinand VII in 1808 to 1833 marked the beginning of political chaos in Spain. For our report, in the results context in the 19th century Philippines, we will be discussing about first the author's background and also the political and economical development in the Philippines. So now let's talk about the author. Father John N. Schumacher was a Filipino historian who wrote historical writings and he was born in Buffalo, New York as an American. And in 1977, he became a Filipino citizen. He earned a Master of Arts in Philosophy, served as a missionary of the Society of Jesus in Nova Liches, and taught Latin and English at the San Jose Seminary. He passed away on May 14, 2014. It is said that studying Rizal and his seminal thinking is part of understanding Filipino nationalism, meaning giving a central attention to Rizal and his nationalist thought is a thorough approach in understanding the nationalism of the Filipinos. Without understanding Rizal's environment during his days, we would not understand his enduring importance and the relevance of his works today. Cults rendered to Rizal as a national hero focus on words rather than his thoughts. They say that this is usually the irony of these cults. Words of Rizal are used only to get exposed, exhibited, or shown off rather than his thoughts and the historical context of where these thoughts are addressed on, on the issues during his days. Through the origins and development of Filipino nationalism cannot be understood simply by studying Rizal and his nationalist thought, neither can it be understood without giving him central attention. But like any thinkers, Rizal's evolving nationalist thought must be studied within the context of his times. In the 19th century, the nationalist movement became present due to the economic growth. It took place in the Philippines, particularly after 1830. The middle and upper class Filipinos had increased their prosperity. These Filipinos were petitioned to profit by it, including the British and American merchants who were claimed as the organizers. Machineries and consumer goods were brought. During those days of prosperity, the goods were produced by the industrial, industrialized Western countries, including Spain. Philippine exports were mainly agricultural products. The agricultural economy proliferated, thus the rice growing land for the production of rice, the sugar growing land for the production of sugar, and the abaca growing land for the production of ab abaca were the main products being exported. This land that profited the most are growing lands mainly found in Central Luzon, Batangas, parts of Bicol, Negros, and Panay. This also included the hacienderos of Pampanga, Batangas, and the friars owning large haciendas. The prosperity also affected the inquilinos. Inquilinos also profited in the economic growth. Inquilinos are workers usually given the use of small plot of land, implement seed, and a small wage in, retur in return for their their labor. But by this time, these inquilinos are equivalently hacienderos by their own rights. 
but the rising prosperity had also brought friction between inquilinos and the fire haciendas. As the lands grew in value, rents were also raised. The friction due to prosperity led to disputes on who should have the larger share of lands. Eventually, this would lead to a questioning of the prior, friar's rights to the haciendas, for it will be the prosperous inquilinos who will question the rights of the friars. This is done as an agrarian, agrarian revolt to weaken the friars' influence in the economical and political life in the Philippines. The Filipinos in the 19th century had suffered from feudalistic and master-slave relationship by the Spaniards. By the late 18th century, political and economic changes in Europe were finally beginning to affect Spain and thus the Philippines. The demand for sugar and abaca and rice apace and the volume of exports to Europe expanded even further after the completion of the Suez Canal in 1869. The growth of commercial agriculture resulted in the appearance of a new class. Alongside, alongside the land holdings of the church and the rice estates of the pre-Spanish nobility, there arose haciendas of coffee, hemp, and sugar, often the prosperity of enterprising Chinese-Filipino mestizos. Some of the families that gained prominence in the 19th century have continued to play an important role in the Philippine economics and politics. Not until 1863 was there public education in the Philippines, and even, even then, the church controlled the curriculum. Less than one-fifth of those who went to school could read and write Spanish, and far fewer could speak it properly. The limited higher education in the colony was entirely under clerical direction, but by the 1880s, many sons of the wealthy were sent to Europe to study. There, nationalism and a passion for reform blossomed in the liberal atmosphere. So now let's proceed for the political development. Political situation in during the 19th century, there was a struggle between liberals and conservatives. Spain in the 19th century was typified with struggles between liberals and conservatives. Liberals were the people who wanted to fight for the democracy and they wanted the people to vote for their leader. They wanted freedom of speech, freedom of press, and freedom of assembly and many more. While the conservatives, they wanted to remain with status quo. Conservatives wanted to continue the royal bloodline to continue with the government ruled by the royal family. While the liberals did not want the royal family to continue rule because they wanted to vote their own leader. They wanted their leader to come from the people, not the royal family. Next is Spain lost most, if not all, of its colonies in South America in the 19th century. In the 19th century, Spain was characterized by the intermittent civil wars, and Spain lost most, if not all, of its colonies in South America in the 19th century because of these civil wars. There was a war between the liberals and the conservatives. For most of the 19th century, so the colonies of Spain and South include Argentina, Colombia, Venezuela, Chile, Bolivia, and Peru, most of them started to gain even Mexico, gain its independence during the 19th century. So how did this affect the Philippines? Did it have a positive or negative effect? We can say that in the 19th century, Spain was characterized by the political instability because of the struggle between the liberals and conservatives. We can ascertain that it had a negative effect. One of the negative effects of the political instability was the constant practice of replacing governors general. Imagine, from 1853 to, 18, to 1989, there were 41 governors generals in the span of 45 years. What do you think is the effect of this to our country? Because if there are a lot of changes in the government officials in the span of months or even weeks, there will be no consistent policies. Projects will not be finished and the policies will continuously change and that will definitely affect the people. Next is a dumping ground for inept bureaucrats because bureaucrats are very incompetent. The, their main criteria as to why they were sent to the Philippines was simply because of their loyalty to the king. They were loyal men to the king but they did not have 
any merit as to why they were being sent to Philippines. They simply enriched themselves having no interest in the Filipino people. They, as I mentioned a while ago, there was a failure to make or achieve consistent policies. Policies constantly change from time to time because of the changes in government officials and generals. You can also say that there was indeed political instability. So the Philippines was very affected by the political situation in Spain, and you have to remember this foul characteristic. So as you can see for the political structure here during the Spanish colonial era, we have the King of Spain. Under the King of Spain, we have the executive branch or the governor general, the colonial government, and also the, the, the judicial branch. We have the royal audiencia, residencia, lower court, and governor general. So under the colonial government, we have the provincial government alcalde. Under it is the pueblos or towns or the gobernador silios and also a, bar a barrios or the cabeza de barangay. Next is the municipal government corrimiento or the corridor and also the city government ayuntamiento or the cabildo. So cabildo is the city council. We have the alcalde, the rijodores, the agomayor and, and the escribando. And also we have the barrios, which is the Cabeza de Barangay. The events of the 19th century formed the opinion that the Filipinos had to live in complete control and influence of the government. These events were crucial to the formation of Rizal's love for his country because he observed the, the many injustices which were being done to the Filipinos. It is important to study the life of Jose Rizal because of his input towards the independence of, of the Philippines. He chose to fight for his country through knowledge and power of letters. He noticed the continued suffering of his countrymen at the hands of the Spaniards and sought to put an end on this situation. The 19th century saw so much change. Slavery was abolished and the first and second industrial revolution which was also overlapped with the 18th and 20th centuries respectively led to massive urbanization and much higher levels of productivity, profit, and prosperity. As I conclude in Rizal context in 19th century Philippines, Rizal's education was influenced by the emergence of the middle upper class and the rivalry between the friars and tenants inspired Rizal to advocate for religious reforms. And also one of the grounds behind Rizal's call for government change was the administration's widespread corruption. And I believe that the government's lack of care motivated Rizal to advocate for the education of his fellow Filipinos. I am Akma De Jam. This is Angel George M. Democrito. Thank you for listening.